In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of the Advent season called Gaudete Sunday. Rejoice, rejoice that the Lord is coming. Let us ask the Lord as we begin to celebrate these sacred mysteries to help us to prepare worthily and well. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now listen to the Word of God as it is proclaimed to us. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter Sion, Shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Sion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. The Lord your God will exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Speak, Lord, we are listening. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
Glory to, to you, Lord. Lord. The crowds who were gathering to be baptized by John asked him, What should we do? In reply, John said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and, and we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with ex expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Advent is a time when many of us focus quite tightly on ourselves and those closest to us. If we are blessed to have happy and harmonious relationships, this time of year can strengthen our bonds with family and friends. And while this is very comforting at one level, it excludes a wider vision that is at the heart of the Advent season and of today's readings. The prophet Zephaniah, speaking for the Lord, says, Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord does not address individuals. He does not say, Rejoice, Father Bob. He addresses the whole people of God. In speaking to the Philippians, St. Paul takes a slightly different slant. He does address the community as a conscious gathering of individuals. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. St. Paul takes up a theme that touches many of his letters. We are in Christ Jesus. Personally, we choose to have faith in him. And together, the body of Christ, his people, are in him. St. Paul makes it clear we are all called to be a people in Christ Jesus, shaped according to Christ's heart and mind. John the Baptist has been proclaiming a baptism of repentance and announcing that the kingdom of God is near at hand. People have heard him and now are asking how to respond. John doesn't tell them to isolate themselves and pray. Instead, he calls them to take steps to restore their relationships with others. Share your wealth with those who have little. For tax collectors, be content collecting the correct amount. In other words, don't extort more from people. Don't misuse your power. Soldiers also had power, the power to intimidate, and it was a power that was often used selfishly. We would say today, soldiers behaving more like a gang. Instead, be satisfied with your wages. Don't be greedy. Don't take advantage of others. Together, these readings push us to look at Advent from a different point of view than the one we're used to. As a people, we are preparing for the coming of the Lord. We shift our focus first to a deeper appreciation that together we are God's people. Then we heed St. Paul's call to live at peace with the community of believers so we can be witnesses of life in Christ. And finally, we heed John the Baptist's call 
to relate to society at large in a way that is faithful to our identity as those awaiting the coming of the Savior. But what if we are on the other side of that equation? What if we ourselves feel alienated and alone at this time of year? Maybe we have lost a loved one and this time of year reminds us of that loss when everyone else seems to be rushing about and socializing. It could be that we've become alienated even from ourselves. Maybe we have made choices in the past that have caused us now to be aware of our isolation. Maybe others whom we have loved have given up, have given up or let us go in some way. In such things, I'm made to think of an old chestnut, a book written by Morris West and later a film called The Shoes of the Fisherman. Anthony Quinn plays an archbishop, exiled to the Soviet gulag, who is plucked out of his imprisonment for political reasons. Before departing Russia, he is interviewed by the Soviet leader. He says two things that to me are outstanding. First, he says that without some kind of loving, we wither. And then he observes, quite to the incredulity of his interviewer, that he has been free for a very long time, well before his imprisonment ended. In other words, he has come to terms with his circumstances and chosen to be free. I think the image that comes to mind for me is of the tabernacle of my heart, where the Lord the Most High dwells. Circumstance cannot take away the Holy of Holies that is within me. And so if we can reconcile with others and change our way of living, we are being called to do so. And when we find ourselves in circumstances we cannot change, we are called to be free and centered in Christ. In these ways, we will make of ourselves more and more the holy people of God that he has called us to be. This is the heart of our joy, a joy to be shared with the whole world, a joy that reaches far beyond those we know best. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Christ is coming. Let us pray that we will always be prepared to receive him. For the church, called to lead humanity to the light of Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For people in our midst who walk in darkness, loneliness, and despair, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all the world's children, born and unborn, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick and the infirm, and all those separated from their parish communities who join us today, that this Mass, celebrated for them, will bring comfort and joy. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us take a few moments and offer our own petitions. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, we thank you for all your gifts, but especially for the gift of Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Having listened to God's word, let us celebrate his supper in joy and thanksgiving. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. 
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exalted in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy holy Lord. Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Benedict, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so now, at our Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the health of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are, are yours, yours now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let's take a moment now to enter into that spirit of peace and reconciliation, which is the gift of our Savior. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof. roof. But only, only say the, the word, and, and my soul shall, shall be healed. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God remain with you and descend upon you forever, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us rejoice now in our very heart to proclaim the good news of Jesus in our lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Good morning and thank you for being with us on this Sunday. And a special word of thanks to Father Robert O'Brien. Father Bob is the pastor of the Church of St. Gregory the Great in Oshawa. Every Sunday morning we gather with you to celebrate the Eucharist. And this is that wonderful time of the year when you write to me with your letters, your Christmas greetings, your financial support that makes the Mass possible every Sunday. The Mass is offered for all of your intentions because you're our parish community. Until next week at this time, rest assured of our prayers and please pray for us. God bless you.